The Minecraft marketplace has to be one of the most hated things about Minecraft Bedrock. Taking what's considered free on Java and monetizing it in a YouTube clickbait-like fashion left a sour taste in many players' mouths. But there are some good things about the marketplace. It allows players to make money from their hard work and creations, something which a lot of Java creators rely on donations for. But it's also a cesspit of theft, copyright infringement, bugs and issues, as well as poorly and hypocritically moderated by Microsoft. So let's discuss, shall we? But there are some small problems. You see, to make and upload content on the marketplace, you have to apply for what's known as a Microsoft or Marketplace partner. And then once approved, you gain access to a variety of materials that the public is not allowed to see. Publicly sharing such private information likely results in a strike or even partnership termination, which we'll get into later. That meant in order to learn about the behind the scenes of the marketplace, I had to get in contact with a handful of marketplace partners, of which will remain anonymous for obvious reasons. So let me tell you what I learned. First of all, there are guidelines surrounding what content you can and can't make. Whenever a marketplace creator releases new content, it has to go through a validation process whereby the content is checked against the guidelines to ensure it's appropriate. The guidelines are of course private, but I managed to find out a bit about them. There's of course the basic ones like no nudity or offensive content and no violence, but then there's a few more specific ones. Religious and ideological content is not allowed and neither is content about the military. That's why if you search up gun, there is no content about guns or weapons in that similar domain. Interestingly, I was also told that you aren't allowed to use the word Christmas in the name of any content, but that rule clearly hasn't been followed or isn't actively being enforced. Then there's also some guidelines relating to features of the content. For example, worlds cannot be less than 300 by 300 blocks in size, although I'm assuming there's some leeway here, as currently some of the most popular maps, such as One Block and Sky Block, are significantly less than 300 by 300. Skins also apparently have to have a diversity of ethnicities, although I'm not sure how well that's enforced considering skins can be more than just human. There's a strike system for those who break the guidelines. Two strikes and your partnership is terminated. Pretty serious stuff, as that means you only have one chance. These guidelines seem mostly fine, however there are some issues. I was told by multiple partners that Pride or LGBT content wasn't allowed, likely part of their no ideological content rule. I tested this myself and was able to find three skin packs that had Pride content, but upon searching LGBT, there were no results. So why is this a thing? Well, I was told that the marketplace is the same across multiple countries, besides China, and in some countries, for example in the Middle East, such ideologies are actually illegal. Now, I'm not going to get into the debate as to whether this content should be allowed or not, but I will say that it's quite hypocritical to disallow such content when the official Minecraft Twitter regularly posts in support of Pride Month. Even the official Minecraft YouTube channel still has their Pride modified version of their profile picture in use. Partners in the past have complained to Microsoft, stating they should add default filters to the marketplace based on what country the user is playing from, so that LGBT content can be made and accessed in most countries which aren't against against it. But they haven't. As to why, well I guess we won't ever know until Microsoft says something about it. But anyways, let's move on to a major issue with the marketplace. Copyright. The guideline states specifically that you aren't allowed to use the content of other IPs if not authorized. This has been extremely problematic and hasn't been enforced properly. Extremely problematic just like my sub count. Now wait before you skip the video. That's right, I see all you video skippers. Make sure to sub and help me get to 500k by the end of the year. No pressure of course. Anyways, copyrighted content plagues the Minecraft marketplace. Just search Among Us and you'll see there is hundreds, if not thousands of results, many of which haven't even tried to hide their blatant plagiarism. Among Us is not a game owned or licensed by Microsoft to my knowledge, so these 750 plus results should be considered against their guidelines, right? Well, you know why Microsoft doesn't do anything and allows this content? It's simple. First and foremost, this content obviously sells immensely well, as keep in mind that Bedrock has quite a young player base. You can see some of the more popular Among Us Marketplace items have thousands of reviews, and considering only a small percentage of purchasers would have reviewed it, it's likely that this $4-$5 to $5 skin pack has sold tens of thousands of times, making tens of thousands of dollars in the process. 
And of course, Microsoft gets a cut of that, as well as all the other trendy copyright content that gains almost instant popularity. So with all this money they are making, why would they want to ban such content? But legally, how do they get away with it? Well, if Microsoft made it their responsibility to ensure and check that no content on the marketplace infringed on copyright, then they would be liable for each case of copyright infringement, which they failed to check and remove. And if you look at the marketplace, that's no small amount. So instead, what they have done is in the partner or marketplace terms and conditions, they state that Microsoft assumes that the person making the marketplace content has permission to use the copyrighted content from other IPs and that they don't actually check themselves, basically pushing the responsibility onto marketplace partners. And since the marketplace partners obviously don't care, they can utilize this little loophole to make copyrighted content that Microsoft allows on the basis that they have apparently attained permission. This has left many marketplace creators upset because low effort content is produced quickly and sells like crazy, drowning out much of the high effort original content. And Microsoft aren't going to do anything about it, not only because it makes them money, but also because they don't want to risk the absolute mess that would be liability. Other games aren't the only thing having their image stolen. Popular YouTubers also get their Minecraft skins and brands ripped off by marketplace creators. Just search up Dream and you'll see hundreds of results, also with hundreds, if not thousands of reviews. I can almost guarantee you that Dream didn't give permission for all this content to be made. But once again, why would Microsoft care when they're making that sweet, sweet money from it? Stolen content, of course, is abundant on the marketplace. Ant Venom has made two good videos about such stolen content. The Faithful Resource Pack, arguably the most popular Minecraft resource pack of all time, was stolen and sold on the marketplace. The Aether Mod, a mod literally worked on by a now Minecraft developer, was also stolen and sold on the marketplace. And who knows how much other lesser known and not as popular Java content is currently being sold today. It's likely that there's hundreds of Java mods, resource packs, skins and more which have been stolen and sold on the marketplace, but we are none the wiser because they aren't as well known on Java Edition. So, what other issues does the marketplace have? Well, its design just isn't great. Clicking the purchase button by accident doesn't prompt any confirmation message, but rather just straight up purchases the marketplace content. Come on Microsoft, even most mobile games these days have a confirmed purchase prompt. There's no refunds either. Potato Pie 25 who made a good video on stolen marketplace content earlier this year, shared another marketplace issue with me. A lot of Bedrock server players still use Bedrock version 1.18.12 as it's the most stable version for multiplayer and upon trying to view anything in the market on that version, the game straight up crashes. The market is also very slow to load and often requires game restarts to work. It's just very buggy. One of the coolest things about the Bedrock Marketplace are the RTX worlds and shaders you can get, some of which for free. I got in contact with at MadLad on Twitter, who's a texture designer that creates add-ons specifically for RTX textures. MadLad told me that he was unable to upload his vanilla RTX resource pack, which fixed many of the game's rendering bugs and improved performance because RTX resource packs can't be uploaded to the marketplace without being attached to a world and vanilla textures can't be included in resource packs. Such annoying limitations and issues with the marketplace are only hindering creators from sharing their great and original creations. One marketplace partner I talked with also mentioned that a common complaint amongst many partners is the time it takes for Microsoft to approve and check their content with it supposedly taking 2-3 months for new content to pass through Microsoft's validation system. Understandably, there's not much that can be done as hundreds of partners send in lots of content each month, each needing to be reviewed. But if this process takes so long, why is the quality control so bad and why is so much crap let through? Alright alright, the marketplace isn't all that bad though. What it's enabled is for many enthusiasts of Minecraft to turn their passion for modding, creating textures and building into a real job. Think about it like this, many Minecraft Java resource pack, mod and skin makers don't get much money, if any, from what they do, with the vast majority relying on donations. So giving bedrock creators the ability to monetize their passion and hobby is seriously cool. If we change our perspective and think that every time you buy something from the marketplace, you are instead giving money to a single passionate developer or group of developers who love what they do, it doesn't make the market seem nearly as bad now, does it? Of course, Microsoft gets a cut and there's a lot of really crap content on the marketplace, as we've already discussed, which doesn't deserve the money, but that shouldn't detract from the actual good content which is out there. 
The marketplace has given the ordinary Minecraft player the ability to make money. And many partners actually do make a living off their marketplace creations alone, setting up small companies and development groups. Through the monetization of the marketplace, these developers are only able to dedicate more time and effort into the marketplace content they produce, increasing its originality as well as its scope. Lots of awesome stuff which has been made that's on the marketplace would have taken a lot of time and effort, much of which is overlooked by Java players. The marketplace also gives console and mobile players access to content they never would have really been able to access otherwise. Us Java players are truly fortunate to be on the PC platform with such an old and dedicated community who love creating custom content surrounding the game, but console and mobile players aren't so lucky. Restricted by their platform, they wouldn't have nearly as much access to content as they do now if it weren't for the marketplace. The idea behind the marketplace isn't so bad, neither is the fact that you have to pay money for many of the creations, as overall you are supporting a smaller developer or creator. The main issue with the market is the significant lack of quality control by Microsoft allowing low effort, plagiarized or even stolen content to be sold, and they are most likely not going to do anything about it either. If the marketplace was properly moderated and had its guidelines upheld properly, it would be in a significantly better place now than it currently is. But unless such issues are resolved, the marketplace will only likely continue to get worse and stolen content will still make its way onto the market and the next trend is sure to be plastered all over it. Clearly there's more going on behind the scenes with the marketplace that we don't know. One partner told me that roughly 50% of the partners they've spoken to don't like the state of the current market. And since they are unable to share much of the details due to fear of losing their partnership, it's hard to unravel what's really going on. If you have any information or are a marketplace partner yourself, please reach out to me. I will keep you 100% anonymous, of course. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe and help me get to 500k. Thank you all so much for watching.